I'm here with James French, one of the designers for Icarus Interstellar. Tell us your role for Project Icarus. Well, it is just that. It's a, that of being a designer. I'm not an expert in, the, in the fusion or anything of that nature, but I have a long experience in conventional propulsion and in spacecraft design. So I'm trying to apply that experience and knowledge to looking at the requirements for a vehicle to go to the stars. And you worked on Project Apollo. What was your role for them? I worked at Rocketdyne on the development of all the rocket engines used in the Saturn V and Saturn 1B stack that was used to launch the Apollo missions. And then I went to TRW and was there from the beginning of the development of the engine, the throttleable engine that was used in the lunar landings. Do you feel like that experience um, with Project Apollo has been really applicable to Project Icarus? Well, I think it's pr it's applicable in the sense that it's, uh, it's you've got to design a practical spacecraft. You can hypothesize. <laughs> That's true, right? <laughs> you can hi hypothesize about all the fancy propulsion and all like that, but you've got to build a machine that works. And that's what we had to do on Apollo. So technology has changed and evolved, but it's still at, at root the same problem. So do you think that interstellar space travel is going to happen sometime in this century? I mean, I know that, you know, you were alive when people traveled to the moon and they didn't think that was going to happen. So Exactly true. Yeah, when I was a kid, people thought I was really weird for talking about going to the moon. When the <laughs> and little did they know. <laughs> little did they know. Well, they were, might, might have been right about the weird part. But the, v, the V2 rocket was high-class technology in those days. Now we're, at the, we're in the same place regarding going to the stars. People think you're nuts, and that's where I want to be, at the cutting edge. So you think it's going to happen for sure, then? I think it will happen sooner or later. Whether it'll make it in this century depends probably on more political issues than it does on the technical ones, to be honest. That's very true, right? I think a lot of the political things these days almost hold technology back. They don't almost hold technology back. They do hold technology back. We, when I was working on Apollo, I was absolutely convinced we could have a man on Mars or a person on Mars by 1986, and we could have. But the diff now the delay from now till whenever we finally do do it is almost entirely political. And that's a huge delay. That's, you know, half a decade practically at this point. It's more than that, I think. <laughs> it's, a, it's many decades. That's being pretty nice. Yeah, right. And, um, you know, you're one of the more experienced people on the team. Uh, what, what do you think the team has to do in order of organization to, you know, complete this mission? Well, I think the organization, as it is right now, is 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 good for the for preliminary study, which is what Icarus really is. I, in time, of course, if we get serious about it, and we're going to have to start thinking about doing experiments and building hardware, I think the structure then will have to change to something that's a little less fluid than we have now. But I, I think where we are now is a good start. I agree with you. All right, well, thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure talking with you, and hopefully we'll see you again soon. I hope so.